This time I will finish this monochrome manga page. First I create a new layer folder and put all layers I use decoration brushes on into it. Since I am no longer using the layout draft and sketch layers, I'll turn them off in the layer property palette. I will fill in the black parts of the manuscript next. I create a separate layer for this. When I zoom in on those parts and select the fill tool, I make sure to use the refer other layers option. With black selected, I click on the respective areas and I fill the parts with color. When encountering gaps and very detailed parts, I switch to the pen tool and paint them in manually. For areas where lines are not fully closed, I select the Fill tool and activate Close Gap when filling in. All solid fills have been added. To make things easier to see, I hide the layer folder where I gathered the decoration brush effects in. Next, I'll add screen tones to the page. A basic method for toning is to use the selection tool. From the selection tools, I choose the auto select tool and with refer other layers to select active, I select a part I want to add the tone to. To select multiple sections, set how to create to select additionally in the tool property palette. After creating the selection, simply click the tone button on the selection launcher that appears underneath the selection. This will display the simple tone settings window. I'm going to set the number of screen frequency to 30 and the density to 40% and then click OK. This creates a new tone layer with a layer mask where you can see the toned parts. With the same method I'm going to add tones in different places. Since I want to use tones of the same pattern elsewhere, I select the Tone Layers mask and use a pen to paint in the additional tone areas. Apply the same screen tone by using the fill tool and any color.
for areas I didn't mean to add a tone to, I simply used the eraser to delete those sections. If you want to use a different type of screen tones in areas you've already added tones to, use the Layer Property palette to make these adjustments. When a tone layer is selected, the density and pattern of the tone can be changed easily. For example, by using the Screen Frequency slider, you can change the tone to one that is rougher than the current one. With the Density slider, you can easily adjust how bright or dark a tone is going to be. Further, you can also change the circles of a tone into lines, crosses, noise and more in the dot settings. I'm going to add a patterned tone next. I select the area I want to tone with the Auto Select tool and through the window menu I open the material palette. Then I click Monochromatic Patterns and Patterns. This is an overview of basic available tones and gradient tones that are included in Clip Studio Paint or have been downloaded. I choose one of the pattern tones and drag it onto the canvas. With that, the pattern tone is pasted. Just as before, I create a tone layer with a layer mask. It's easier to see the pattern and tone when disabling the layer mask. Using the object tool and holding onto the handles displayed on the tone layer lets you resize the pattern. Unnecessary parts can be erased by selecting the layer mask of the tone and using the eraser tool. And this is how you can add special patterned tones. To replace pasted tones with different patterns, select the tone you want from the material palette and drag it onto the tone layer in the layer palette. It will simply be replaced like that. Next, let's try exchanging the patterns for a gradient tone. To do that, I select gradient in the material palette. This time I'm going to use the button Replace Editing Layer with Selected Material at the bottom of the Material Palette. Just as with the other patterns, the gradient's direction and size can be changed with the displayed handles when using the Object tool. Next, let's try applying a tone by using a color illustration or a layer with a color. For this example, I'm going to create a new layer and change the expression color to color. Using the pen and the selection tool, I'm painting in the hair with a soft reddish color.
When you select a layer and click the Tone button in the Layer Property palette, a tone is automatically created based on the color density of the original layer. Decreasing the opacity of the layer itself reduces the density of the tone as well. Just as before, you can change the screen frequency and pattern of tones in the Layer Property palette. If you paint a darker color with a brush tool while the tone itself is displayed, it's possible to directly apply shading to the tone. The effect can be undone by simply disabling the tone button in the layer property palette. Next, I will show you how to easily draw a sky using tones. With the Audio Select tool and Refer Other Layers to Select Active, I paste a tone with dots. I select the decoration tool, hatching and then cross-hatching for tone scraping, also using a transparent color. With the mask of the tone layer selected, I use the cross-hatching decoration tool to erase from the tone. For the clouds, I'm using the Ghost Clouds sub-tool from the Hatching Decoration Tools. Finally, by adjusting the screen frequency in the layer property palette, I adjust density to a value closer to the other tone layers. The next tool we will look at and use is the gradient tool and in particular the manga gradient. I use the Auto Select tool to select the designated area for the gradient tone. Then I select Gradient tool and the Manga gradient from the tool palette. And move the cursor in the direction in which I want to apply the gradient. A gradient layer with a layer mask is created. You can adjust the intensity and direction later by selecting the gradient layer and operating the handles with the object tools. When using the manga gradient on a canvas with the expression color set to monochrome, a gradient tone is created automatically. However, if the expression color is something other than monochrome, it will not be converted automatically. As with the other tones, it is possible to change the screen frequency in the layer properties.
I'll set this to 30, the same as for the other tones on this page. Now the toning is finished. Once the document is finished, I save it. First, to preserve the layer structure, I will save it in the Clip Studio Paint format. To export this manga page as a monochrome image file, I select the file menu, export single layer and then I choose between JPEG or PNG. When exporting a monochrome document, in the export detail settings I only check the text box for the output image element and then export it. When exporting this document for upload on the internet, I make sure that the expression color is set to color instead. In order to use halftone dots properly for presentation on the web, it is a good idea to convert all tones to grays. I change the expression color to grey. Then I click on Advanced Settings of Color and turn off Enable Tone Effect for Layer under Export Settings for Tone. However, if you place tone layers above the line drawing or when you use the hatchet tones, you may be able to export the work properly even if you leave the check on. I can fine-tune the settings, while viewing the result in the previous screen that appears after completing the settings. As this canvas is too large for the web, it needs to be made smaller. Under Output Size, I change the unit of the document to PX and set the width to 1000 PX. Then I click OK and export it. Now this document can be published on the web.